Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna review the content created by a non-native English speaker and content creator who has 649,000 subscribers on YouTube and 3.8 million followers on Instagram. Let's get started. So let's watch the first clip. Excuse me, is this water, um, sorry? I mean, is it good to drink? Yes, it is potable. Potable. Good word. I'm always afraid of drinking water from uh, this thing we here. We say tap water. Tap water. Yeah, it's always good to know it's precedence. So the creator used the word precedence. In this reel, the creator is actually teaching the wrong word. So precedence means to take priority. So if you are working your job and your boss tells you that you have two tasks and they tell you task A is more important than task B, they might say task A takes precedence over task B. It takes priority or it is more important. The creator should have used the word provenance. Provenance refers to where something comes from or its origins. So when the speaker is wondering where the water comes from, they should have asked or they should have talked about the water's provenance. So the first mistake here is it's the wrong word. The second thing I would say is it's kind of awkward to say provenance or to talk about the provenance of water. A native English speaker would just say it's important to know where water comes from. Now, the next thing I would say about this reel is that the speaker is teaching the word potable. Potable is not a common word. It is rarely used. And I actually had to look it up myself after I watched this reel. So it would be more common for a native English speaker to say, yes, the water is safe to drink or the water is drinkable. So it's kind of interesting. This reel got 1.2 million views on Instagram. And there's some good news. Uh, viewers actually commented that this is bad information. So English with SLLC commented, I'm sorry, learners put their trust in you. They look to you for learning. Your content is consistently incorrect. If you are not sure, check it before posting. Accuracy matters confident speaking isn't enough and your popularity doesn't matter. What does is the trust that your followers place in you. And this comment got 87 likes on Instagram. So the good news is that not all viewers are blindly accepting the information that is provided in this reel. But what about the next ones? Let's watch the next video. Don't do that. Why? You have to, um, the towel before hanging it. Ah, oh, I have to squeeze the towel. Squeeze, yeah. And where do I hang it? Uh, you can hang it in this thing here. In the clothes horse. <laughs> clothes horse. <laughs> okay. Um, you can also use um, these. Um, you mean clothespin. Okay, so in this reel, the creator is teaching the, the words or the vocabulary clothes horse, and then they use a verb uh, squeeze. So in this reel, there are two things I would say. The first thing is the, the word clothes horse or the name clothes horse is not commonly used. We would actually probably just call it a drying rack. So if this creator is trying to teach vocabulary that English speakers or new English learners can use when they are in North America, cold source is not common. The second thing I would say is the creator is actually using the wrong verb here. So the creator says you have to squeeze the towel before you put it on the clothes horse or the drying rack. Actually, to squeeze something and to what she's doing in the video, those are two different actions. So if I am holding someone's hand, let's say I'm holding my niece's hand, I could squeeze her hand like this. But what this creator is doing in the video, this action of twisting your hands, 
is called wringing something. So if your towel is wet and you want to hang it to dry, first you have to wring the towel or wring it out, not squeeze it. So this reel got 4 million views on Instagram. And actually some people have commented that this is incorrect information. So that is good news. Actually, one person says here, it's not totally correct to say squeeze the towel. Actually, wring it out would be better for this situation. And then the creator responded and said, both are correct. They're just variations. Squeeze, wring out, compress. Not really. To compress something, to wring it out, or to squeeze it, they might sound like similar actions, but they're actually different. And another person commented and said, or they asked, can we say ring it instead of squeezing it? This comment got 300 likes and then the creator responded and said, yes, you can, they're synonyms, squeeze, ring out, twist. Different actions, different verbs. Okay, let's watch the next reel. Where are you? I'm near a big trash can. A big trash can, like a dumpster? A dumpster, yeah. It's a street behind many buildings. Oh, a rear lane. A rear lane, yeah. And I'm wearing a jean skirt. You're wearing a denim skirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so in this reel, uh, the creator is teaching the vocabulary dumpster. That's fine. Uh, but they use the, the vocabulary um, rear lane. I haven't heard of that before. We would just say alley or alleyway. Why this person or this character is standing near a dumpster in an alleyway, I don't know, but it would be more common to say alley or alleyway, not rear lane. Okay, let's watch the next reel. Order number 61. Thank you. Could you add those small things? Small things? Um, those flavors that you can add to the hamburger? Ah, these are called dipping sauce. But what about the yellow one? Mustard, it's here. Oh, mustard. Have a nice day. Okay, so this reel or this video got 24 million views on YouTube. 24 million. So let's talk about the content. What does this video offer in terms of English learning? Well, unfortunately, the creator uses the wrong vocabulary. So the creator refers to these little packets that uh, she holds as dipping sauces. Um, and I guess it's supposed to look like the, the character is in McDonald's. But let's I'm going to throw a video up on the screen here and show you guys the information from uh, a restaurant like McDonald's. So as you can see here, there is a difference between dipping sauces and condiments. So condiments would be like ketchup, mustard, um, things that we would put on a burger and they would come with the burger. So there's two weird things here. The creator is saying, can I have some dipping sauces? And she's referring to mustard as a dipping sauce. Mustard would be a condiment. So wrong vocabulary. The next thing is that um, the character is asking for sauces after she purchased her hamburger. These sauces would come on the burger unless the customer specified that they didn't want any sauces or they didn't want anything on their burger. So dipping sauces would be these sauces that are available at McDonald's and you would use dipping sauces for dipping things in like chicken nuggets, for example. Condiments would be ketchup, mustard, etc. Let's keep going. Okay, so this next video got 22 million views on YouTube. Let's watch it. Do I need to remove my uh, dentures? No, no, I don't wear dentures. I was talking about my... Ah, uh... oh, your braces. Yeah, you need to remove them. Okay. Open your mouth. Mm -mm. Why? Because 
It doesn't smell good. Ugh, you have bad mm -hmm. breath. Mm. <laughs> okay, so leaving aside the fact that a dentist would not behave like this because it would be very unprofessional, um, let's talk about the vocabulary and the English content. So the creator actually uses the wrong vocabulary here. So when she removes the thing from her mouth, she calls them braces. Braces would probably, uh, in everyday conversation, refer more to these permanently attached devices that um, people people get to straighten their teeth. And I'll, I'll put a picture here on the screen to show you guys the difference between braces and an aligner. Let's see if anyone has commented on that. So on this video, someone commented the fact that the braces were actually retainers, so she still got the name wrong. This comment received 21,000 likes and 250 replies. So people are talking. This is great. So let's watch the next video. So this one has 928,000 views on YouTube. Hey, can you take a picture of me? Oh, but it's too... Uh, too big, you know. Oh, it's enlarged. Too enlarged. Yeah, it's too enlarged. So let's reduce the size. Now it's perfect. Okay, so... This reel makes no sense. And I'll tell you why. We don't say this. Someone's commented, actually, we say zoom in and zoom out, don't we? And people, reply, people have replied and they, they have said, yes, we do. The creator said, that's also possible. Okay, we don't say it's too enlarged. If someone takes a photo of me and it's too close, I would say it's too zoomed in. Oh, sorry, the photo's too zoomed in. Can you maybe zoom out or can you back up a bit? We would say something like that. We wouldn't say, oh, the photo's too enlarged. That's very awkward and that's wrong. The creator also said, okay, it's too enlarged. Let's reduce the size. That doesn't make sense either. So if I'm creating, let's say a poster on my computer and the poster or the image on my computer is this big, if I shrink it down, that's called reducing the size. You can zoom out or you can back up a bit, but you can't reduce the size. Okay, you guys, let's watch the next video. Could you take a picture of me? Sure. Let me see. Oh no, it's not in the right angle. Sorry? Um, it's not in the right position. Oh, it's not upright. Let me take another one. But you didn't include my feet. Oh, I chopped your feet. You chopped my feet. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not a photographer. I'm a teacher. The creator um, is always playing two characters. One doesn't know the right word and the other corrects them. But here uh, we see a mistake and this mistake is repeated in a lot of the reels. The mistake is that the character who is correcting the other person does not give accurate information. They actually make mistakes as well. So someone commented on this video and this comment got 245 likes. They said, I feel like even though technically the English is correct, most English speakers would say it differently. Yes, that is true. So the person said, in this instance, I personally would say, oh, it's upside down. Yeah, that's what you would do. So if somehow you take a photo upside down, you would just say, or the other person would complain and say, the photo's upside down, can you take it again? They wouldn't say, oh, it's not upright. Now, the next thing is the creator says, oh, take the photo again, you chopped my feet. This is also very awkward. A better option would be to say, can you take the photo again? My feet are cut off, so we would use passive voice here. Okay, so in terms of English content, learning new vocabulary and learning phrases uh, that native English speakers would use, this reel is misleading. 
Let's watch the next video. Can you help me to push uh, this? Push uh, what? Sorry, I didn't get it. Thing on the door. Oh, the knob. We say knob. Just be careful not to trip on the threshold. What do you mean by threshold? This is a threshold. But I think she's hurt now. Okay, so the creator is trying to teach new vocabulary and they are teaching the word threshold. But they say threshold. Threshold. It's pronounced threshold. Don't trip on the threshold. So the creator has an accent and that's perfectly fine, but if they're teaching vocabulary, it's important to teach correct pronunciation. The next thing I would say is just like a lot of the other reels, there's some awkward phrasing that native English speakers probably wouldn't use. The creator taught or was saying, can you help me to push the knob? So it's kind of awkward to say that, a native English speaker would say, could you help me to open the door? Just simply, could you help me to open the door? Could you open the door for me? Or if they wanted to teach the vocabulary knob, you would say, I need to twist the knob to open the door. So I have to give this creator credit. They are trying to teach new vocabulary, but the problem with content like this is the conversations are very inauthentic or just sound very unrealistic and they use phrasing that native English speakers wouldn't use. Okay, so let's watch the last video. This video has 28 million views on Instagram. Let's check it out. Oops, could you pick up my bottle? Your bottle? A little device to close the bottle. Oh, your bottle cap. Bottle cap? Like a real cap? This is also called a cap. Interesting. It's difficult to screw the cap. Screw the cap, yeah. Give it to me. Done. Okay, so what's incorrect about this reel? Uh, okay, so just like lots of other videos by this creator, this video includes some really awkward phrasing. Native English speakers wouldn't speak like this. They wouldn't say, I have to screw the cap. So native English speakers would either say, I need to put the cap on the bottle, or they would say, I need to screw the cap on the bottle. We need that little word, that two letter word on. On is a preposition. So again, we would say screw the cap on or put the cap on. Okay, you guys. So I hope you found this video useful. As a native English speaker and as someone who has a master's degree and a bachelor's degree in English, and as someone who's finishing up her PhD in English, um, and as someone who is an English teacher and who works in education, I think it's my responsibility to point out mistakes like this because there are a lot of English learners out there who definitely want to improve their language skills and they see content like this on Instagram and YouTube and they think they're getting the right information. But in reality, there's a lot of things that you learn from content like this that is either awkward or just plain wrong. So if you found this video useful and you want to see more content like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below to let me know. Before I go, just a reminder, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on alerts so that you can get notifications about my new content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.